Of all the assassins we've seen across the numerous AC games over the years, and all the mentors who ever led the Brotherhood, there's one who's arguably one of the worst leaders in the series, and I'm of course talking about Achilles Davenport, who served as mentor of the Colonial Brotherhood from 1746 to 1760 at the end of Rogue, where Shay and Haytham crippled him and effectively put an end to the Colonial Assassin. But as we know, Achilles would sort of take up the role of makeshift mentor once again, training Connor for the rest of his days. Now when we originally met Achilles in Assassin's Creed 3, he was a bitter crippled loner living out in his homestead completely isolated. But of course, when Rogue came out, we could understand why Achilles acted the way he did, and why he was by himself in the beginning of AC3, seemingly the last of the assassins. But a very interesting question I see among the community, and one that really started being asked after Rogue came out, was Achilles Davenport the real villain in this story? We're going to start by talking about Achilles in Rogue, so I say this quite a lot. While I do really like Rogue's story and the concept, there's quite a few holes in the plot, and most of those have to do with the colonial assassins and Achilles. Achilles was initially a member of the Caribbean Brotherhood, and his mentor was Atabai, whom you may remember from Black Flag. He was then sent to the colonies by Atabai, and formed the Brotherhood with his wife, Abigail. Achilles was always a very serious person. His mission as an assassin was always of utmost priority, and that much is obvious in both AC3 and Rogue. You'll rarely ever see a moment of levity with Achilles, and understandably so, considering his circumstances in these games. Games. Seemingly, Achilles was initially a great leader for the Colonial Brotherhood. He recruited people from all different parts of the world and managed to keep the Templars at bay until, of course, the Lisbon incident. And this is where probably my biggest issue with Rogue's story lies. Achilles, before sending Shay to retrieve the precursor box from Lisbon, warns him to be careful since pieces of Eden are dangerous and unpredictable. But Shay's mission was to retrieve the artifact so he did exactly what he was told. A whole city was destroyed and thousands of innocents died. Achilles obviously didn't know or intend for that to happen, but he's clearly a man of great arrogance and pride. So when Shay accuses him, Achilles deflects the blame back onto Shay and doesn't listen to him. Then of course, that leads to violence where Achilles attacks Shay for trying to steal the manuscript, and that's where it all goes downhill for the Colonial Brotherhood. Honestly, the entire thing seemed like one massive misunderstanding, and something that was hard to wrap my head around initially was why Achilles didn't believe or listen to Shay. I think part of it is Achilles has a bit of an ego, which is not a great thing to have as a leader, and something that's not touched on much in Rogue's story, and should have been more so in my opinion, was that Achilles was dealing with a lot personally during this time frame. Keep in mind, the man lost both his wife Abigail and son Connor to typhoid fever. It is mentioned very briefly in Rogue as almost like a throwaway line between Shay and Liam on the Morrigan. It's so grim about the homestead now that Miss Abigail and little Connor have passed. Aye. I've seen Achilles crying. To me, this conversation helps explain so much about Achilles. If they had made this event more of a major plot point, then it would be easier to understand why Achilles is acting the way he does. Despite losing his wife and son, he carried on as mentor, because like I mentioned earlier, he takes his position and duty as an assassin very seriously. Above all else, while he was clearly going through a very tough time personally. So if that was focused on more, I think it would help with the understanding of Achilles, and likely less people would see him as a villain, which honestly in Rogue, he kinda is. He really is the villain here. He wants to remove these artifacts for reasons that aren't explained too well, other than perhaps just not letting the Templars have them, because despite knowing that Lisbon was destroyed and Shay told him it was due to removing the artifact, he actively chose not to believe him and carried on wanting to remove others. 
But obviously in the end, I feel Achilles comes to realize his mistakes, as the crippled leg will never let him forget. So in Rogue, you could absolutely make the argument that Achilles is a villain. I think there's a little bit more to it than that that isn't touched on very well in Rogue, but with the little we're given of Achilles, it's clear he became a bad mentor for the Creed. Can you imagine if Atabai had sent Adewale to the colonies instead of Achilles? It's very possible that none of the conflict in Rogue would have happened. But moving on to AC3 now, Achilles is clearly a broken man when we first meet him in AC3, and because of the context of what happened in Rogue, you can understand why. He failed and felt such great shame that he disbanded the Brotherhood and abandoned the life of an assassin to live out the rest of his miserable days in his homestead. Until, of course, his redemption shows up at his doorstep. Please, all I ask is a moment of your time. I apologize if I've been unclear or otherwise confused you with my words. It was never my intention to mislead, so let me try to clarify. Get the hell off my land! I think there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to the relationship between Connor and Achilles. There's so much subtext to the dynamic between these two characters. They're arguing in almost every scene they are in together, and both characters are stubborn and absolutely terrible at showing their true emotions. But it's very clear that to Connor, Achilles is like the father figure he never had, while Connor is like the son Achilles lost, which is evident right there in the name. Achilles gave Connor honor the name of his own son, which says more than any words can. You're also going to need a new name. Your skin is fair enough that you might pass for one with uh, Spanish or Italian blood. Better to be thought a Spaniard than a native. And both are better still than I. That is not true. What's true and what is? Aren't always the same. What would you call me then? Connor. Yes, that will be your name. To me, that is way more powerful than Achilles saying something like, you're the son I lost, or something a little more cheesy like that. And I love the way they showed that at the end. Again, without any words, you just see Connor Davenport on the tombstone, and it all makes sense. But I think in a lot of ways, Connor was also Achilles' chance at redemption. He was done with the assassin life. He chose to forget his purpose and just hide, but through training Connor, he was able to feel like he had a accomplished something. To give you a Star Wars analogy here, it's almost like Obi-Wan training Luke in A New Hope. Obi-Wan failed with Anakin, similar to how Achilles failed with Shay, and there's a chance at redemption with training Connor slash Luke. It's not a perfect analogy, okay, but it's a similar concept. And in those six years between the end of Rogue and when Connor and Achilles first meet, the Templar Order has grown without any resistance from the Assassins. And if you think about it, it's so easy to see why Achilles was so bitter upon first meeting Connor. It seemed like an impossible task. The Templar Order was expanding, the assassins were no more. All that was left was Achilles with his crippled leg and abandoned homestead for six years. And then all of the sudden, this 13 year old shows up and wants to become an assassin. Can you imagine a 13 year old showing up out of nowhere at your door, asking you to train them? and wanting to stop the Templars, Achilles turned that 13-year-old kid into an absolute menace. With five years of training before he even officially became an assassin and gave him his robes, and then another 10 years of fighting the Templars before Connor emerged victorious. There's no way Connor does any of this without Achilles and vice versa, so in a lot of ways, Rogue is when Achilles could be considered a villain and AC3 is his redemption 
story. But you could also argue that Achilles manipulated Connor into killing the Templars for him. I mean, after all, Achilles still believed that the Templars must be stopped, even if he's learned not to remove the precursor artifacts. He tells Connor that he needs to kill his own father, and that working with the Templars isn't an option. But does that make him a villain? I feel it's a lot more complicated than that, and what's so great about the characters in AC3 is it's hard to classify them as heroes or villains. Some people might think Haytham is in the right, or Achilles is in the right. Either way, it's safe to say that Achilles' greatest mistake was sending Shay to Lisbon, and then choosing not to believe him and attacking him, while Haytham's biggest mistake was sparing Achilles. If Haytham killed Achilles at the end of Rogue, AC3's story doesn't even happen and Connor isn't there to stop them. Because there is no Connor Kenway, literally and figuratively, without Achilles Davenport. Even Haytham calls his own son Connor, the name Achilles gave him. So, is Achilles the real villain of this story through Rogue and AC3? It's really up to the individual's interpretation of it, but to me personally, in Rogue, he does feel like the villain. What he's doing is wrong, and there's not much justification for it, but in AC3, it's a lot more complicated and nuanced. He's certainly a flawed person with a big ego who suffered great loss, but as an assassin, he redeemed himself by training and mentoring Connor, who of course went on to nearly single-handedly put an end to the Templar presence in the colonies. He managed to do what an entire brotherhood failed to. But let me know in the comments, do you think Achilles is the real villain, or does it depend on which game we're talking about? Or do you think there's not meant to be a villain at all? Maybe we'll do something similar to this for Haytham, I don't know. But if you enjoyed the video, as always, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new. Big thank you to my members for supporting me, and other than that, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day, Assassins.